Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. Now we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a few different styles, but it is most definitely fair to say that this brewery is best known for the different kinds of imperial stouts. Now the beer we're going to have a look at today is is one that I haven't had from these guys before and um, any of the iterations because there have been quite a few but this one is one of their latest releases through System Bolaget here in Sweden it is supposed to be very nice and I have to say I'm quite curious to see what it's going to have in store for us so hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head a little bit to the southwest of me here in Lund to Arluf to the northeast of Malmö as well where I work and we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Nerd Brewing. So this particular beer is called Malak. It comes in at 11.2% ABV. Of course it's another imperial stout but this particular edition of Malak is the hazelnut one. I've seen that there's been one with pecans and also one with pistachios so we need to keep an eye on the future and see if we can get a hold of some of those as well. But yeah, this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoskerik assortment through Systembolaget in Sweden for December of 2022. So uh, yeah, this should be quite interesting. I've always enjoyed the Imperial Milk Stouts that I've had in the past from Nerd Brewing. I forget the names of them now, but uh, yeah, the Imperial Milk Stouts that they do always tend to be pretty good. But as I've mentioned to you before, for me, when it comes to Nerd Brewing, one of the things I really like about them is that they always have a little bit of a kind of old school Russian Imperial Stout character to them, rather than going the more modern direction of pastry stout and you know really high sweetness and things like that so yeah it's always nice to return to nerd brewing and we tend to review at least one beer from these guys every month but yeah this was one of their winter releases for 2022 but yeah we'll crack on then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us as always with my reviews i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting though just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done it from their brewing before and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system just go up to the search bar put in your hometown state county whatever if i've reviewed beers from your local area those should hopefully pop up otherwise you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and like i say you'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many other things. So yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and we'll talk once again about Nerd Brewing. So Nerd Brewing, as I've told you before, were originally based in Malmö and the company was founded by Hannes Gruber and Karin Carlson back in 2015 when they had their premiere at the Malmö Ull and Whiskey Festival. But both of these guys were just big beer enthusiasts and they wanted to kind of break into the industry. But Hannes had been a home brewer for a long time and he got very good feedback on his beers and so it was this that inspired him to turn professional. But he comes from a background in software development and he of course was taking care of the brewing side of things in the early days, whereas Karen was an entrepreneur and a trader within the IT industry and she managed the business side of the company, although she's no longer uh, involved with Nerd Brewing at all actually. But they started up with a very modest production and they have become one of the most highly rated breweries according to Untapped in Sweden. So the beers were originally brewed in the Lila Ulf Fabrik in Chad beer facility in Rosengård in Malmö and they brewed one or two in South Plains Brewing which was next door as well. But the company officially joined with Chad beer and Lila Ulf Fabrik to form a collective but they continued to sell their beers under their own brands. But of course Nerd Brewing brew mainly Imperial Stouts but over the years they have released a couple of IPAs, there's been a barley wine as well and a few other different styles. In fact one of the best beers I think I ever tried from their brewing was, uh, was a barley wine but the name of that beer has gone uh, right out of my head. The New England IPA that they released as well called Switch was pretty damn good as well but a lot of the beers are of course named after programming terms because of Hannes's uh, background and the term open source beer is actually because he posts all the brewer recipes on the website and he says if there isn't one that's available there just email him and he'll make sure that it gets up it's more of a case that he's kind of forgotten because he is very busy actually but yeah nerd brewing 
uh, yeah, very good in this regard, and as I say, very well regarded when it comes to Imperial Stouts. Uh, but in the early days, actually, other than some beer festivals around, around Sweden, it was really difficult to get a hold of the Nerd Brewing beers. But since 2018, they've been selling their beers regularly in Sistembo Agate, and then later, in March of 2021, they announced a new collective called Molecule, and this includes Elm 11, Nerd, and Chad Beer, and they've now got their facility in Arlov, which starts off with a 1500 litre brew kit. So it's Anders from uh, Elm 11 who mainly does the brewing of the beers these days. Uh, of course, Elm 11 sell mainly, their brand is mainly kind of, kind of fruity, juicy, modern, Nordic, smoothie, whatever you want to call them, sour beers. The Chad Beer brand is used for IPAs and lagers, and Nerd Brewing, of course, are the big malty buggers. I think that's a fair way to describe it. But in late 2022, they had their first a sort of brew pub day or open brewery day where they were selling the beers on site and they're hoping that they can do this more regularly in the future but as of December 2022 when I'm filming this review for you uh, Nerd Brewing have released 125 different kinds of beer but of course you have Elm 11 and Chad Beer releasing things as well so the Molecule Beer Collective or Molecule Brewing Collective I believe it's called are releasing beers very very regularly but um, yeah that is all I can really tell you about Nerd Brewing and the Molecule Brewing Collective for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, though, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's go on and actually have a little look at this beer itself. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, the whole open source beer thing is because Hannes posts... Uh, the beer recipes on the website but you're there you can see nerd brewing and this one of course like we said to malak i keep saying of course in this video so i hope that's not getting on your nerves but yeah there have been a number of different iterations of this beer there's been one with pecans there's been one with pistachios there's been the hazelnut one there may well have been more because i know that hannes likes to play around with the uh, you know with different nuts and different types of coffee beans and all this kind of stuff but you can see the wax top on this one is a lovely kind of what would we say that is? A sort of sea blue, something like that. But yeah, you can see on the bottom of the bottle here as well, Nerd Brewing. I believe I paid 70 or 80 Swedish kroner with this one. We'll go with 80 just to be safe. So that is about 8 euros, about £7.50 sterling these days. And they'd be in the region of like $9 American, something like that. But yeah, 2022 edition. This one, 330 milliliter bottle, 11.2% Imperial Milk Stout with hazelnuts added into the brew so uh yeah let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then i'm very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us let's just make sure we can get under this and get the thing open oh this one doesn't want to go ah we're maybe going to have to pause the video and see if we can get this Nah, we might have to pause the video, guys. Just a second. All right, let's see if we have more luck this time. I took the knife and went under the wax seal. So, yeah, there we go. Got it, finally. First time I've had to do that with an aired beer, actually. Usually these wax seals are pretty decent. I maybe just went at it from the wrong angle right enough. But anyway, beer's open now. You can see not a lot of smoke on the opening this time. But let's get it out into the glass and see what we have, yeah. Ooh. This is gonna be nice, I think. So, we got all of it out in one go, why not? So, let me just reposition that so it looks nice for the video, and there we are. But yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect from the Imperial Stout, yeah, this one's poured a lovely, big, dark, ebony rosewood color. But before the head disappears, we can say safely that this beer is poured with a one-third finger of a frothy, kind of dark tan head. Just look at that lovely dark tan head in there. Looks very, very nice. Lots of small bubbles, but a few more medium and bigger size bubbles toward the top of the head there. But overall, it does look pretty nice. But as I said, yeah, this beer is pretty much black as night. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in 
will affect the colour of the beer as well. But when it comes to an imperial stout, it's very difficult to actually affect the colour of the beer at all uh, with things like that. But yeah, not much in the way of visible carbonation with this beer. You can see there were one or two big bubbles sticking toward the bottom of the side of the glass there, but a few little ones just going up toward the bottom of that head there. But overall, it does look very, very nice, I have to say. And the head has just faded away to be a really thin foamy layer and some thicker uh, foam around the edge of the glass there. A nice kind of ring. So yeah, I do like how this beer uh, goes about its business. Uh, yeah, nothing surprised about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is, but let's have a wee look at the aroma and see what this one has to offer. Oh yeah, <laughs> straight away with this one, the hazelnuts are very, very obvious. And this is the funny thing, you know, you, it's a bit strange with this one because normally when they're brewing, you can still smell the, old, the, the kind of Russian imperial stout behind it. So the adjuncts in this one, I think, are a little bit more pungent than I've come across in some of the Nerd Brewing beers um, before. Mm. But it is very nice, the aroma of this beer. Um, as a first impression, it's very smooth, it's very sweet. And as I say, it's just a big nutty, woody affair, this one. So yeah, gets a thumbs up from me. I like this. Mm, yeah. Aroma-wise... That is pretty damn nice, and like I say, uh, just a little bit more pungent on the adjuncts than we've had from Nerd Brewing before, I think. So, um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Let's break that aroma down, though, and describe it for you a wee bit more. So, the backbone of the beer, you can smell uh, with this one, you know, as always. Nerd Brewing, I know, they really like to use very long wort boils. Quite often, they leave the wort bubbling overnight before they go in. And, uh, and actually brew the beer and finish it off. But um, yeah, with this one, you've got this lovely kind of woody backbone to it. And that is, of course, that mixes in with the whole nutty vibe that the beer has. So you've got a mix of woodiness and nuttiness forming the backbone of this beer. But on top of that, you can smell there is a little bit of that toasty, well-fired bread crust. I know that Special B is um, a favourite malt of Hannes. Um, but yeah, you've got that lovely woody, nutty backbone. Some roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust on top of that. And then you've got this lovely big sort of, you've got a mix of like a sweet German rye bready character to this one. Although I wouldn't say that's massively pungent, but this beer, for me, this one has a hell of a lot of like Klabkirke, you know, Swedish chocolate cake, chocolate brownie sort of vibe to it. This one, I really think this is one of the, the sweetest and most sort of pastry-like uh, Imperial Stouts that we've had from their brewing before. But I, can, I know when we go into this one, it's not going to be like that. And of course, it's going to be the lactose. This one, we'll just check that it will, you know, if it's an Imperial Milk Stout, it is going to have lactose in it, yeah. Uh, it's the oats and the lactose in this beer that are giving you the big sort of clad kirke, um brownie sort of vibe to the beer. So that's absolutely present in this one. But yeah, aroma-wise, this beer... I think is very, very nice in that sense. So yeah, you've got roast, as I say, the woody nutty backbone, roasty well fired bread crust, a, pardon me, a sort of slight layer of sweet German kind of rye bread, then this clad kirke, chocolate brownie sort of thing that's coming from the oats and the, the lactose in the beer. And then above that, you start to get a lot of chocolate out of this one. So yeah, the chocolatey notes out of the beer I think are really, um, the chocolatey notes that come out of the beer are really interesting in this one. It's a mix between, um, it's a mix, you've got a kind of spectrum with this one. So you've got that nice um, kind of higher cocoa chocolate in there. Although I wouldn't say this one is overly high cocoa. You know, you've got maybe at the back of the nose, <coughs> pardon me, you've got a little bit of a kind of 70-ish, percent cocoa chocolate you've got a little bit of that darkness there but further forward on the nose you can really smell these kind of vanilla milky chocolate notes coming out of the beer definitely getting a lot of that so like 30 percent cocoa chocolate you really have a spectrum on this one but then on top yeah on top of the uh, chocolate you absolutely have a little bit of um yeah on top of the chocolate 
you've got a good little bit of kind of brown you've got a bit of brown sugar in this one but it's not overly brown sugary this beer so in the middle of the nose there's a bit of sweet caramel in there there's a little bit of toasty brown sugar underneath but i'm not getting the big sort of treacly molasses and kind of leathery brown sugar notes in this beer that we've seen from their brewing and other ones um and that's probably just because it's an imperial milk stout rather than anything else we might pick up more of that in the actual flavor of the beer but like i say this one for me in comparison with other Nair brewing beers. This is definitely sweeter and the adjuncts just come out a little bit more in the aroma of this beer. So um yeah, the aroma, the way the aroma goes together in this one is pretty um is pretty damn nice. So yeah, I don't know if there's much more that we need to say about the malty side of this beer to be honest with you. Let's go to the hoppy and fruity side of things. So, hoppiness in this beer, of course, the Imperial Stout is not the most hop-forward style of beer. We can say that straight away. But on the hoppy side of this beer, there's a little touch of earthiness to it. Yeah, little tiny touch of earthiness. Maybe a little bit of herbal character as well, but those definitely take a back seat to the, to the malty side of things. A little bit of grassiness, and it's a smooth grassiness around the front of the nose as well. Teeny little bit of floral character. But yeah, overall... Um, the way this beer goes together, I think, is, is quite interesting. The hoppy character is not too prominent, but yeah, you do get little remnants of this. Um, yeah, on the, the fruity side of the beer then, um, it really is quite interesting. You've got a nice little bit of a kind of raisiny, you do have a little bit of a raisiny sharpness to this one, but you've got a kind of plummy, you do have a sort of oily, plummy, uh, character in there as well so a little bit of raisiny sharpness big oily plum then you do you do have little elements of a drier prune and kind of datey character underneath that uh, which is quite interesting so yeah a little bit of that going on i've absolutely you know there's a little touch of black currant in this one as well but and maybe a little bit of a more oily blackberry but that's right in the top at the front of the nose so yeah the fruity yeah the fruity character of this beer I find really quite interesting. Um, but as I say, this beer, the nuts, the hazelnuts really dominate the aroma in this one. And that's something that I've not come across in their brewing before. You know, this beer, the, the adjunct really is quite pungent in this one compared to, uh, to other things. So yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me, this beer. This is one that's made me think a little bit, I have to say. So um, yeah, this is going to be quite interesting for sure. But yeah, as I always say, take a wee bit of time to just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think that we should have a taste of this one now and see what it's all about. So yeah, this is the Malak uh, Hazelnut Edition, 2022 vintage, I should say as well, from Nerd Brewing in Arlov, just outside of Malmö, uh, here in Skåne in the south of Sweden, an 11.2% Imperial Milk Stout. So yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma, but we're going to get stuck in. Now, Slanger Skull, cheers. Yeah, um, this is definitely, what I'm gonna say about this beer, the flavor of this one does diverge quite a wee bit from the aroma. And it has that typical, old school RIS Imperial Stout bitterness that you always get from their brewing. I'm tempted, I know that on the front of the bottle of this one it tells you how many IBUs it is, but I'm tempted just to leave it to the end and uh, have a wee look and see what it is uh, later on. But yeah, this, this beer does have a good little bit of bitterness and a bit of roastiness to it, so I like that. I will say straight away it's the aftertaste that it gives you that old you know it's that aftertaste where you get that typical roasty well-fired nerd brewing backbone but you've also got you know you in the beginning this beer has a, the, the big sort of sweetness and things you would expect of um 
of an imperial milk stout. So I get once again, you know, it's a really really solid beer from Nerd Brewing, um, and you know I don't expect any less from these guys. Uh, we've had many many good imperial stouts from them over the last kind of four or five years. They never disappoint. So yeah, can't complain about these at all. Yeah, so where do we start with this beer then? Middle third of your palate, as always. So yeah, now that the palate's adjusted to this one a little bit, the, the you know the, the actually the flavour does start to match match the aroma a little bit more. I would say. So yeah, you have this nice. You've got a sort of in the middle of your palate. You can feel there's a mix of like a smooth kind of woody peanutty. Um, kind of character with this one. You can feel that's the backbone of the beer, but on top of that, you get this roasty, toasty, really well fired bread crusty layer coming out of it, which I do like. So, yeah, nice roasty, toasty, well fired layer coming out of the beer. Um, and again, yeah, I really do like how that. Um, how that goes together so yeah woody peanutty layer roasty toasty well fired bread crust in this one and then above that yeah you're getting a mix of different things so you can feel there's a layer of like a sweet almost like german rye bread and then above that like as i was talking about in the aroma you get this chocolate brownie swedish cracker you know this just sludgy cakey brownie type layer in there and that is very very nice um, and within that kind of cakey layer, you've got the chocolate, but although above that, you can feel that it's got a little bit more of a kind of almost dry cocoa powdery um, chocolate note to it. So yeah, the... The kind of above the kind of the, the chocolate cakey layer, as I say, that kind of clad kaka, clad kaka, can never pronounce that word properly. The clad kaka, um, sort of chocolate brownie flavor that you get out of this one. Further back on the palate, it's definitely more kind of bitter and you know quite high percentage cocoa chocolate, but sort of 80 90 percent cocoa, which is more than I was picking up in the aroma, right enough. But as you move further forward. Uh, toward the front of that middle sorry palate you get more of a kind of <coughs> milky chocolate character out of this one which is, is quite interesting too but yeah the way that goes together I have to say is is very very nice uh, and within that you know, you can feel that that big sort of thick cakey layer in this one has been created by the, the presence of the oats and the lactose in this beer. But you can definitely get the more barley malt notes underneath the roasty well fired bread crust and the sweet rye bread. But then, yeah, you get this big oily, sludgy, clad cake, yeah, um, chocolate brownie layer out of the beer. But like I said, above that, you've got a drier note coming out of it, which is more... Um, yeah, you, you do have, as I say, at the back of that front third, uh, middle third of your palate, you've got this really roasty, well-fired, um, yeah, you do have this really kind of roasty, well-fired, um, you know, 90% cocoa chocolate there. But as you move further forward along the palate, you can feel that it mellows out a little bit. and But it doesn't get that, it really doesn't get that milky, if that makes sense. It maybe mellows out to about 60% or 50% cocoa. So, yeah. That's quite interesting in this one. But within that sort of chocolatey layer, you do get an element of brown sugar out of this beer. But th there's more in the flavour than I thought there was going to be. But not, um, you know, and that's based on the aroma. But as I say, in the aroma, you really didn't pick anything up in, in, in the brown sugary sense. So that the brown sugary notes you get in this beer are quite, um, they are quite, mild in a sense they are quite subtle i would say that's probably a good way to put it so in the middle of your palate you just have this little circle there where the brown sugary notes come out of the beer and definitely the base of that um 
definitely the base of that kind of brown sugary uh, quality in the beer is, is quite nice. So yeah, but that leathery brown sugary base in the middle of that um in the middle of that um little circle in your palate you can feel there is a little bit of a sweet caramel there but then as you move a little bit further out from that it's more treacly molasses like and then yeah you've got that kind of big leathery note out of it too and as i said nerd brewing and um, they leave these warp they, they leave the warp for these beers boiling overnight and uh that's what gives you the big leathery character to these to these nerd brewing beers but i think we've said everything we need to about the middle third of your palate in this beer and that of course is the most complex part of it so let's go to the the back third of the palate then for the moment so the border region between middle and back third of your palate you can feel there's a little bit of a bready build up in there and it is like a it's like a chocolate muffin it, it's a bit like a chocolate muffin sort of um yeah a little bit of a kind of chocolate muffin um clad cake, Swedish chocolate cake sort of thing. So you get a little bit of that, but as I say, it's a bit more eerie like muffin, to be honest with you. But the base of that back third of your palate, you've got the sort of woody, peanutty base. You've also got the... <coughs> you've got the woody, peanutty base. You've also got the... Um, how would you say? Um, you've got a little bit of the... The kind of roasty well fire bread crust and then it's even more bitter i would say and above that you get the rye bready notes and the rye bready layer is definitely kind of taller and more airy i think that's absolutely fair to say and then above that you get that more dense kind of cakey type note to the beer but that's very thin on the back third of the palate it is just quite minimal but then above that you get a little bit more of a kind of airy kind of chocolate muffiny uh, black bread type flavour there so you can feel that above it's very layered again on the back third of your palate but you can feel that flavour is certainly taller and as you move further forward it just condenses down and sort of squashes together so yeah the way that the beer goes together in the kind of malty and yeasty uh, side of things along with the adjuncts is quite interesting but this is definitely one of the more prominent nerd brewing beers I've had in terms of, uh, of adjuncts for sure So yeah, the, I mean, the nutty side of things is quite interesting for me because uh, I'm not the biggest fan of like, you know, pica, peanuts and almonds and hazelnuts and all these kind of things. Um, but I still quite like this beer. Um, I wouldn't pick this out as my favourite nerd brewing beer that I've had. But in, in fairness, it is, it, it's interesting to try this one being not such a big nut aficionado. And still enjoying it quite a bit. So maybe I need to think about this a wee bit. It's nuts or, you know, nuts or something I just never really got into. Even like, you know, chocolate with nuts inside of it. It's, you know, nut is a flavour that just never really struck a chord with me in the same way that other things did. So yeah, this is really interesting from that perspective. And once again, I think Anis has done a good job of this one. Of course, Anders has done a good job of brewing it as well. So yeah, really interesting beer this one for me. Just from that perspective, it's a flavour that I'm not... It's a flavour that I don't seek out that much and it's one that I'm not madly familiar with as well. <coughs> Still recovering from this. It's a bit weird. Um, so yeah, I think that covers the malty and yeasty side of this beer. Let's go on to the hoppy and fruity side of things. So, back gorns of the palate. Yeah, back gorns of the palate with this one then. You've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. Then as you move further forward, you get a little touch of herbal character, but the earthiness does actually build in this beer the further into the aftertaste you go. We have to remember as well that we are drinking this beer quite fresh. You could theoretically age this for a couple of years and the hoppy character would drop out of it. So yeah, we are drinking this one quite fresh. We need to remember that. But yeah, as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, then it's a little bit herbal. And as you reach the front corners of the palate, it's got a little bit more sort of floral aromaticity to it. You can feel that kind of lingering floral aromaticity to the beer but round the front curve of the tongue it's definitely a little bit lighter and more grassy for sure which i do quite like 
And then the grassiness, actually, the, the, the zestiness, you do actually get a little bit of zestiness out of the grassy side of this beer, which is quite interesting. But let's focus on the front third of your palate and the fruity side of the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that kind of bready, cakey build up in this one. And it is quite, you know, clad cracker like chocolate muffin, chocolate brownie sort of thing, more like a brownie or a or more sludgy like clad cracker for sure. But the base of the front third, as I say, a little bit of roasty well-fired bread crust, but then again, you've got that clad cracker, sludgy sort of thing there too. But then above that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll the way out of the beer. So let's focus on the fruity side of things. So, fruity side of the beer is kind of similar to what I was thinking it would be from the aroma. It actually, this the front third of your palate, it almost has a little bit like a kind of brandy soaked type feel to it. You know, you've got this dry, dainty, sultana, peary kind of thing going on. And that kind of sits above the, the sludgy clad cracker that forms the base of the front third of your palate. So keep that in mind, it just has this brandy soaked kind of vibe to it this one and it's that's playing in quite well with the nutty side of the beer but yeah on the back of that front third of your palate you get a little bit of the raisiny sharpness underneath that you've got the juicy plums you can feel the drier prunes in there definitely some dates and sultanas underneath that so yeah but then as you move further forward in that front third of your palate you absolutely do get some of the kind of juicier figs that you would expect. So yeah, juicy figs in there. And then as you push further forward, you have a little bit of um, a more kind of black currenty base and also a good little bit of blackberry as well. So yeah, the way that this beer goes together from that perspective is really quite, um, it's really quite nice. So it gets a big thumbs up from me. From that particular uh, side of things the fruity side of this beer is is quite nice but like i say like a little bit of a brandy base and then all these other things on top of it that i've described to you as well so yeah this has been a really interesting one to uh, to try so yeah i think we can leave it at that for this one so this was the malak and 11.2 percent um imperial milk stout i think we can leave it at that for the flavor side of things in terms of the mouth feel uh, for me, this one, um, it's definitely full bodied. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Um, carbonation is very, very smooth. It's got a lovely kind of creamy mouthfeel to it as well. Very kind of silky. In terms of IBUs, I didn't look at that bottle instantly. I never thought to. But this one in the beginning, it felt a lot more bitter. I wouldn't be surprised if this is sort of 50 or 60 IBUs. In the beginning, it felt a bit higher, like 70 or 80. But 50, 60 IBUs, I think. It's probably about right for this one, both from the malt base and from the, yeah, the hoppy side of things. But of course, the hoppy side will drop out a bit later on. The malt base, like we said, um, it's got a bit of woodiness in there, a bit of roastiness, a bit of bready character, and a really thick sort of creamy, sludgy sort of vibe to it, and some sweetness on top. The malt base is the most complex side of the beer. The fruits are nice and oily, but there's a mix of bright, like um, <coughs> pardon me more oily fruits in there but also a drier side to it um yeah it's just a really interesting beer this one but quite this strikes me as quite different to what i've had uh, from their brewing in the past but i like this and i would be curious to try the other versions and, and see how the, the different nuts play up but the hazelnut in this one like i say um i'm not good at distinguishing the different kinds of nutty flavors but the woody nutty base of this beer really Ling lingers there throughout the whole flavour so if you're into uh, different kind of nuts and things you are going to enjoy this one if you like nutty chocolate you will enjoy this beer but yeah I think that's everything we really need to say about this one to be honest so like I said this is the Malak Hazelnut Edition 2022 Vintage and 11.2% Imperial Milk Stout with uh, hazelnuts added into it from their brewing at Narlov in Skåne here in the south of Sweden um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from their brewing as well. Let me know what your favourite Malak has been as well, because uh, I will need to see if I can get a hold of some of the different uh, editions of this beer. But this has been really interesting to try. So again, thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out their social media. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Slanjit, skull. Cheers. I'm going to try not to cough again at the end of this video. Slanjit just now.